Going live. Going we live. Are, okay, we're live with the Disney Crush podcast live stream Tuesday night, eight o'clock. It is February 18th, 2020. And tonight we are going to be talking about the Hoop De Doo Review. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Hoop De Doo Review, its history, how to book it, how to get there, what it costs, what you get to eat. And we are live right now. <laughs> and somebody's talking at Dave's house. <laughs> you there, she Dave? Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> she had the live stream on. Oh, and Kevin can see Mike in the background. He said, hi, Mike. There he is. So, oh, he she had us on in the background. Yeah, she had us on in the background. Okay. But I don't so, know why. So I need to approach the elephant in the room here, Dave. That's a really nice house. Mm, thank you. <laughs> now, well, the, last, the last time I visited you, there wasn't a fireplace. There wasn't a baby grand piano. No, you were at the beach house. I tried. This is the the country home we we have. You only come down to the beach, which is a smaller house. Um, that's the one you're used to seeing. So. Oh, I, I didn't realize. The winter in the winter time, we're like snowbirds. We go out to the country. You know? oh, okay. Too cold for the beach right now. So. So what does it look like outside your house right now? Um. Well, I can. I can. Well, I can. I got a cameras around the house. Oh, sure. Okay. And I can show you uh, what it looks like outside. Okay. It's it's beautiful out there. We got deer. Oh, look, there's some deer right there. Oh, look yes. And <laughs> look at that. That's amazing. See that? Yeah. So. Uh, uh, ha ha. Our friend in the Pacific Northwest is with us tonight. You know who that is. That's somebody who wants to hear all about dinner at the Hoopty Doo Review because he heard they were serving Hey Hey. I'm not talking to him. He's no oh. longer my friend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, Hey Hey. It's okay. It's okay. He didn't mean it. He's such a mean man <laughs> trying to fry my Hey Hey up. How dare him. Okay, Tony, I'm going to talk about the Hoopty Doo. Do you know the Hoopty Doo? The Hoopty Doo Review. Tell show. me about the Hoopty Doo Review, David. It's Judy Pence Ludwig's favorite dinner show. They go frequently. Well, she's got some good taste because it's a really good show. Uh, we were fortunate enough that our brother-in-law actually got our whole family some tickets to that show one uh, one year. And I wasn't like that excited to go see it. Mm -hmm. But we went. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's a really good, well put together show, and it should be because they've been doing it for a long time. They, they've, they've, uh, they've had over forty thousand performances so far. Wow! And eleven million guests have come through. It's a two-hour show, so it's no slacker. I mean, for the money, do you know what is it? Uh, like eighty something bucks a piece, I think. Oh, well, I'm gonna get into that. Okay. I'm gonna get into prices. But for a, a two-hour show and all you can eat, hey, it's not it's 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 really good. It's well put together. It, it's not a bad value. You're right. No, and it opened uh, June uh, 30th, 1974. And here's the cool part that I found out while doing some research for it was that it was part of a Disney World Fine Arts College workshop program, and it was only meant to, you know, be around for like a month or two. It was just something they just kind of put together and just really? did it. But it became so popular that when the kids went back to college. Uh -huh. Disney Disney brought in their whole cast, a, a whole new cast, and made it a. Uh, I think it was September, sometime in September, they made it a permanent fixture there. I didn't know that. That's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So, and you know, oh Walt, you know, he loved all that frontier land and mm -hmm. all the outdoors and trains and yeah. So this would have been right up his alley. So, um, I got some other cool facts. You want any more facts about this? Yeah, place? absolutely. Um, well, I can tell you that all the wood, mm -hmm. all that wood is, uh, pine from Montana. Really? All that, all the, yeah, that's all brought in from Montana and all the rocks were brought in from North Carolina. And, uh, I know that a lot of my pools we do, 
uh, the rocks are brought in if you're going to do a rock waterfall in uh, down here in the uh -huh. south. Yeah. All of all the rocks are brought in. Most of the rocks are brought in from uh, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, the white pines. There's twelve hundred and eighty three logs in that place. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of wood. And they brought yeah. it all from Montana, Northwest. They, and that's what they were going for. They were going for that Northwestern territory kind of look. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think they pulled it off. I think they did a good job. Absolutely. Yeah. And you see, if you can see by the pictures, it's not like overwhelming. It's yeah. a very, it, you have enough room in there, but yet it's open. It's, it's, um, you know, it's very uh, kind of intimate, kind of cool place, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they do have seating up there on the second floor. Yep. And if you if you decide you want to get on that second floor, down on the first floor down here, we'll talk about that later too, mm -hmm. probably. But that's where a lot of the action is because the uh, the cast uh, the the performers come out and kind of go around and you know enter you know right uh, talk to you and and kind you become kind of part of the performance yourself in a way. Absolutely. But there is no elevator to get there. So if you're handicapped or you need, you know, you don't want to climb stairs, you you can't get to those stairs there. So, I mean, upstairs. Right. The you, should, floor. you need category one or two one. seating. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So um, we, I can talk a little, I can speak a little bit to that, to the seating at Hoop Did You Review and to booking the Hoop Did You Review. Um, the Hoop Did You Review has categories. The seating is um, category one two and three category one is on the floor closest to the stage cat so it's those orange seats and actually i have a new seating chart that they just have on their website okay so your the dark blue is toward the stage the stage is at the top of the, that paper so the dark blue seats are category one those are $72 per adult, $43 per child, plus tax. Gratuity is included. Oh, actually, these prices, I'm sorry, it says at the bottom, these prices include tax and gratuity. So keep that in mind when you go to Hoopty to review that you're paying gratuity when you, when you pay for your meal. The dark blue seats are category one. The medium blue seats. I don't know why they made them all blue. <laughs> they should have done different colors. So then the the slightly <laughs> lighter seats are category two. And then the lightest of the blue seats are category three. And those are the furthest back seats and the upper level, which is those seats up here and around the sides if you can see the picture there. So yeah. And you can see how close you are to the stage. Yeah. It's tables. not, it's not a big, it's not a big theater. Mm -mm. So um, even if you're up top, you can still see all the action. The only thing is I do know that some of those seats on the side, the seats swivel. So you face your table to eat and then you can turn the seat. The chair turns around completely so you can eat your, I mean, I'm sorry. So you can watch the show on the stage and yeah. they do, they do give you time to, they bring out the food and they give you time to eat and then some action happens and then they give you a break and you can eat some more and then some more action happens. So there are breaks throughout the show. So let's talk about the prices again. So the category one seats, those are the ones closest to the stage on the ground floor. You just put that in front of Sorry. me so I can't read it. <laughs> Those are $72 per adult, $43 per child. Category two is still on that first level, but toward the back. Those are $67 per adult, $39 per child. And category three are those upper level seats. And along the back and sides, those are $64 per adult, $38 per child. And that includes tax and gratuity. So... It's while it's a, a costly meal, it's actually like you said, you're getting a sh dinner and a show and it's all you can eat. So compared to some other things at Disney, it's actually not a bad value. The uh, meal is on the dining plan. It's two dining credits. And with two dining credits, you can get category two 
or three seating. I want to show you there are three shows a night, four o'clock, 6.15 and 8.30. Now last year when I stayed, I stayed on the deluxe dining plan, I was able to get category one seating for that 8.30 show, the last show, because it's the least popular show when you're eating late um, with category one and that you could you can use the dining plan at the last show, but I say buyer beware because this is this year's price scheme and it says category one, not eligible for use with the Disney dining plan. I don't know if anything's changed in 2020 because in 2019, you were able to get category one on the dining plan if you were willing to go to that last show. So, um, I'm not sure if that's changed. Uli is indicating that the earlier you book, you can start booking this at 180 days. The earlier you book, the closer to the stage you're supposed to be. So she said she always books right at 180 days and they are one or two tables back from the stage. Um, I hate to tell Uli this. <laughs> Maybe she'll hate me because I booked <laughs> like a month before and I, that's my table and it's literally butt up against the stage. That's my husband <laughs> literally in front of the stage, center stage. So I've heard the same thing, Uli, that the sooner you book at 180 days, the closer you are to the stage. I don't know if my performance was just a, not a popular one, but I was there during spring break last year and we got butt up against the stage. We're going to talk about that. Brian's question is, will the minivans drop you right at Pioneer Hall? The answer is yes, but we're going to talk about how to get to Pioneer Hall after we talk about the show. And Shannon, hi, just joined in now. I have always wanted to do the hoop to do review. I think we might do it in September with four adults and two kids, ages four, almost five, and two at the time of travel. Yeah, if you're going to do it in September, that would be a good time to do it. Get out of the heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I said, your dinners are uh, – your choices of shows are 4, 6, 15, and 8.30. You can book up to 180 days in advance. It's believed that the sooner you book, the better seats you'll get. And um, the thing you have to know is – this meal, unless you're using the dining plan, you have to pay for in advance. So you're paying for the show when you book the reservation. You can book it online or you can book it on the phone. You cannot book it on the app. You have to book it either on the browser or on the phone. I just have my travel agent book it for me. That's the easiest way to do everything. <laughs> so... um once you arrive to Walt Disney World, you can go to your hotel concierge and pick up tickets. And that's what these, this is what this is a picture of. These are, this is my ticket to the show saying that I'm confirmed. See, I went Monday, March 18th, 2019. And um, I, I picked up my ticket right at the hotel concierge. You can pick up the tickets at guest services if you're in one of the parks that day, or you can pick up the tickets up to, 40 minutes, I think starting 40 minutes before the show at the box office. Let me see. I want to make sure I, I read that right. Cause I, I read that, um, prepayment tickets, same day box office pickup will be available 40 minutes prior to show time. So there's a box office right next to the show. And right next to the Pioneer Hall, right there, next to the bathrooms. And you can go get your tickets there if you haven't had a chance to pick them up earlier. I picked mine up th that morning at my resort. It was easy peasy. You know, there was nobody waiting in line in front of me. So once you arrive, oh, so we're going to talk about uh, how to get to the show, right? Mm hmm. And, and it's, Uli, Uli is talking to you. I'm sorry. I have something in front of the screen. Oh, see, really? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking you were. Con I was contradicting you. I was thinking I hate to tell you that I booked a month in advance and I got to see, sit right next to the 
right next to the stage, literally. I didn't want you to be mad at me because we had the best seats in the house. I hate to tell you. So anyway. We talked about accessibility. If you're if you're in a wheelchair, you'll have to book category one or two to be down on the first floor. So Shannon said they're going to do the dining plan. It it may be better to pay out of pocket. You're right. It's because it's uh for the price. If you're going to get the the category two seats, it might it might be a better deal to just pay for it and use those credits for another meal. It's really up to you. $67 a person for category two. Yeah. Well, you know, get your mom off the phone, Uli, and pay attention, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's so let's talk about getting there. Let's go back to Brian's question. Getting to Pioneer Hall. Uh, we did mention, right? Pioneer Hall is in Fort Wilderness, which is the campground at Walt Disney World. Brian has probably the easiest way to get there. Minivans are allowed to drop you off all the way right, not right in front of Pioneer Hall, but where the buses drop in the back, which is pretty close to Pioneer Hall. And it's probably the most efficient way to get there. But there are other ways. If you're driving, you can go to Fort Wilderness, tell them you're there for Hoop De Do Review, and they will check your reservation, make sure you really have a reservation. They'll let you park in the front of Fort Wilderness. Fort Wilderness is a huge campground and you are not allowed to drive around and park anywhere in Fort Wilderness. You just have to park at the front and there are internal buses that will take you to Pioneer Hall, which is in the back. That's actually called the settlement. There are three bus lines at Fort Wilderness, the red, no, the orange, the purple and the yellow. Any of those bus lines that come. So there's a there's when you get when you park, am I making sense? I'm like clamoring. Mm -hmm. You park, there's a bus stop right there. You walk over to the bus stop, and buses are coming and going. The purple bus, the yellow bus, and the orange bus will all take you to the settlement. Tell the bus driver, they're all very nice. Tell them where you're going. I'm going to hoop de doo. And they will tell you, okay, get off at the settlement. And there'll be a few stops along the way, but the last bus stop is always going to be the settlement. So just, just tell the bus driver where you're going and he'll probably tell you, this is where you want to get off or hoop de do. And there's a announcement overhead that'll also say, this is, you know, the settlement. So get off here for hoop de do review. Uber, Brian, Brian's question. I'm sorry. I'm seeing Brian's question. Uber will drop you off at the front. They will drop you off at the front and you'll have to take one of the internal buses to the back. And my husband and I did use an Uber on the way home from the show last March. And we, um, we had to get on one of the internal buses and take it to the front. And mm -hmm. that's where our Uber picked us up. So I actually called the Uber while I was on the bus. And <laughs> when we got to the, to the depot, the Uber was just about pulling up. It was perfect timing. So. I, I, I love the, I love Lyft and Uber and Disney. Mm -hmm. We yeah. use it all the, all the yeah. time now because, uh, no, I despise the buses. We're yeah. our big, uh, big shot. We're going to be giving these magnets away towards the end of the show. So stay tuned if you're still around. Yeah. So the next thing I wanted to mention was if you want to use Disney transportation and that's what Shannon is asking about. Shannon's asking about the boats to Fort Wilderness. Yes. You can use Disney transportation to get to Fort Wilderness. If you're at any of the parks, there are buses from Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom that all go to Fort Wilderness. Those buses will drop you at the front, which is called the outpost. They'll drop you off the outpost bus stop. And at the outpost bus stop, you will then have to take a yellow, a purple, or an orange bus to the settlement in the back. If you are coming from Magic Kingdom, that's what Uli does. If you're coming from Magic Kingdom, there is a boat. The boat from Magic Kingdom will drop you off at the back of Fort Wilderness, right there, steps away from Pioneer Hall. That is the preferable way of getting 
to the hoop to do review is take a bus to magic kingdom and from magic kingdom take a boat to fort wilderness you can also get a boat from wilderness lodge or the contemporary there are small boats you know those those little ones those little wooden looking boats mm -hmm. so if you're at the contemporary or the or, or wilderness lodge you can do that so uh you could just do that the settlement sounds like a long ways away. The settlement, Fort Wilderness is over, a, it's over, how, it's over a mile, isn't it, Dave? The, uh, probably. The, yeah. The, yeah. Mm. But the, the bus, the internal buses are not bad. People complain mm. about the internal, Dave and I go to Fort Wilderness. Oh, have you ever, have you ever rented a golf cart that? We, uh, no, no, no. No. Mm. People say, oh, you have to have a golf cart. We've never, yeah. I, I use the internal buses. They're really not that bad. No, they're, so, they're awesome. Yeah, they're not much different than the other ones. So, <laughs> so um, the every bus will, st will stop at the outpost and the settlement. There'll be different stops in between, but it's not a big deal. Okay, I, I just lost two friends so far. I've lost another one, Tom and uh, Travis. Um, I just want to say something about what Shannon said. Shannon says she's staying at Bay Lake Tower and will probably walk over to Magic Kingdom and take a boat. You can, but if you're staying at Bay Lake Tower, you can also get a boat directly from the Contemporary to Fort Wilderness. There's a, there's a, there's a triangular boat line that goes to the Contemporary, Fort Wilderness, and Wilderness Lodge. So um, that's an option too. And Michael's playing ACDC in the background. I don't know if you could hear it. <laughs> oh, Travis. Hey. Anna. Hi, Anna. What is going on, Anna? So cool you jumped in here. Okay, so Brian wants to know how the heck he's getting home after the show. <laughs> now, in the past, I know I, when I stayed at Fort Wilderness, I would see after the show buses going to some of the resorts like after the last show but rich and i went to the last show last year and that was not an option when we left the show we were told no there's no buses back to your resorts you have to get yourself back to your resorts so we took the internal bus to the front and got an uber um you if magic kingdom is still open take the boat back to magic kingdom and get a bus back to your resort um call a minivan. Minivans will pick you up from the back of Fort Wilderness and take you back to your resort. Michael's playing Highway to Hell really loud. I don't know if that's coming through. A little bit, but that's okay. Sounds good. Background music. Pasquale. Hi. He found us. I don't know. Pasquale, did you listen to the podcast yet? Because he was the person who wanted to know why Kevin kept calling the Skyliner the Death Buckets. It was a little bit of an inside joke. We miss you too, Anna. So, so we're talking about getting back to your resort after the show. Um, so you've got the buses, the boat back to Magic Kingdom, doing that backwards. If it's really late, you might have to take the internal bus to the outpost and get a, another bus to Disney Springs and then get a bus to your resort. I wouldn't do that. I would Uber a minivan. Yeah. I yeah, think sure. I think so too. I think yep. so too. Brian, the mini, you're, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we did, and it was easy, and it was. I want to say, and we got an XL because my husband likes the bigger car, and I think it was maybe eleven dollars. Yeah, so. we we always pay the little extra and, and get the XL, even if it's yeah. just me and the wife. We just so. Yeah, Travis. I guess she's joined us late. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the shows. Shows are at 4, 6.15, and 8.30. So what are they serving, Dave, at the hoop de doo review? Oh, they serve uh, fried chicken. And oh. what? Yeah. They, and uh, whoop, hang on. I want to show that there's it's your meal. When you first sit down, your server will bring you a salad and some cornbread. It's really good cornbread. It's if you like sweet cornbread, that's what that is. It's it's a sweeter cornbread. People rave about it. Remember, it's all you can eat. It's also all you can um, 
drink beer, wine, or sangria. They have yingling. So that's nice. I know my husband loves yingling. After your salad, they bring ribs and fried chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, and baked beans. Michael's liking the fried chicken. So I want you to look at that fry, that bowl of fried chicken. Yes, all you care to enjoy. There were only two of us. There were only two of us. And they brought us a whole chicken. And I thought it was such a waste of food to bring us all that food for two people. I really wish they had maybe brought us half a chicken or just a few ribs, but that, that, that pot is deceiving. There were like eight ribs in there and there was a whole chicken in there. And I think rich ate a piece of chicken. I ate a piece of chicken. He ate a rib. I ate a rib. Maybe he ate another rib. So there was a lot of wasted food there. Yeah. There's a lot of food. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you're, you don't like that kind of show where the, the performers come out and kind of interact with you. Um, I'm kind of shy. So I always, in my head, I'm going, don't pick me. Don't come near me. Don't come near me. <laughs> but yeah. Then there's I this guy who was right next to the stage. And if you see this woman sitting here with the colorful striped dress, she was basically, if you see where the piano is and now see where she is in this picture, she was basically in his lap and she was going back and forth with him all night. And he loved it. So <laughs> my husband loved it. Look at this family before the show starts. I forgot to mention there's uh photo photo opportunities. There's uh, sometimes photo pass photographers there that will take your family picture. Brian, funny. You mentioned Mac and cheese. Yes. The gentleman behind me in line waiting to go in the show was bragging about how he was going to get Mac and cheese. And he wound up sitting behind me at the table behind me. And he asked his server for mac and cheese. And sure enough, she brought him mac and cheese. It's the same mac and cheese they serve at Trails End next door. And I had to laugh because when the show was over, I looked behind me and they maybe took three like spoonfuls of mac and cheese out of the bowl. And there was all this mac and cheese that was going to get thrown away. It really is. It really is a shame. Um, Shannon wants to know, yeah, they will give you mac and cheese and they may be able to give you pizza because there's pizza on the buffet at Trails End, which is the same kitchen right next door. And I have heard that for picky children, just like Ohana, if it's right next door at Trails End, they should be able to get it for you. Uli wants to get called on stage. Uh, Travis, the dinner show is between 90 minutes and two hours. It says it's two hours, uh, but um, I think it was might have been closer than 90 minutes because they have to clear people out between the shows. So you got Brian, that? Brian wants to know how the mashed potatoes are. They're all right. I don't yeah. remember them being memorable. I don't remember any of the sides being, being too memorable. I don't know. No. I wasn't, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I think Tony and you've had a different experience. I mean, the, the fried chicken was okay. Uh, but I wasn't impressed by the ribs. No, I didn't have a different experience. I felt the same way actually. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. no. Um, uh, and I, I really felt bad that, that it all got pitched, you know, like I said, two pieces of chicken, maybe three ribs between the two of us. And, and, uh, when the when that when after your dinner they bring out strawberry shortcake and they make it's a big production they do a whole song and dance with the with the servers and they bring out the strawberry shortcake so let's talk about the show a little bit it's uh, it's a lot of fun it's um kind of home on the range type music uh Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. That kind of music. American standards. So Travis must have joined the show late because we talked about the dining plan already. <laughs> yeah, I think he said he was sorry earlier. There's no <laughs> excuse. He was too busy trying to figure out how to fry hey hey up. That's his problem. That's his problem. Yes, Brian. It's two dining meal credits. 
on the dining plan. So, but if you want to reserve it with the dine and use your dining plan credits, you should call uh, versus trying to do it online. Cause I've heard people have mixed results uh, booking it online and getting the dining <laughs> plan. Travis, you can always ask us questions. And if no, you have any other questions, you could private message us. You know yeah, that. We're, we're just kidding. You ask, ask away, my friend. It's okay. Uli loves the food. Oh, no, no. Uli agrees with us. None of the food is outstanding in her opinion. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Uli. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. There's you guys having dinner. Your kids, Zane looks thrilled to be there. Yeah, that's yeah. He, he, that's the time in his life when he wasn't that happy about being there. Yeah. yeah. So there are vegetarian options. I found this vegetarian menu. <laughs> Up, oh, that's Brian in the back. That's not Michael. I forgot my kid's name. Michael in the background slamming dishes around. So this is the alternative menu that I found posted online. There are some uh, pescetarian, vegan, and vegetarian choices. Pasta, mostly pasta, grilled ve marinated vegetables, and a salmon dish. I have heard that gluten-free people have had some success getting gluten-free chicken. They have uh, grilled chicken. So just ask your server. I don't think they have beyond meat fried chicken quite yet, Steve. <laughs> hey, you can always ask though, right? Let's see, ask, tell the chef you have some kind of uh, allergy or something. What? Where did that question come from, Travis? <laughs> All right. Yes, there should be a live action Moana. Absolutely. How are they going to train a chicken to, to do a hey, hey spot? So the show is great. The actors are wonderful. Sometimes if you're lucky, you might get to see Equity Ben, Dave's favorite Disney actor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he moonlights at the Hoopty Doo Review and there's a picture to prove it. But our actors were really good the night I went. Their voices were amazing. They um, were great dancers. So, yeah. I mean, the food is okay. In my opinion, Tony's opinion, I think most people's opinion, Uli's opinion, it's just okay. But like Uli said, the show makes up for it because the show is yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And they really do involve the um, the the f audience they they bring people into the show they bring people up on stage if you're celebrating anything your birthday anniversary they make you stand up the cast members tend to much in the style of that guy uh will pick a person here or there throughout the audience to go back to throughout the night um like i said that one lady that one lady really glommed on to my husband the blonde there uh, cause she, he, cause she, cause he was sitting right there below her. So, uh, Brian, yeah. the, the strawberry shortcake's okay. I mean, it's nothing to, you know, it's, it's okay. I thought it was okay. The, yeah. Um, it to me, is, it's probably my favorite thing of the whole meal. Yeah. And I, I think it is all you care to eat. The problem is at that point, it's the end of the show. So they don't like you to linger. Mm -mm. They don't like it because they're, they've got another show coming in right behind you, especially if if you're at that four fifteen or six that four o'clock or six fifteen show. There's an, there's another show right coming behind you. And did you hear the did you hear um, Sean from the Diz Unplugged discuss his experience after the eight thirty show? Yeah, that was a little disturbing. Where uh, yeah yeah, and I don't know all the the details to that, but he was he was waiting after the eight thirty show. His brother was actually a performer. And they were waiting for him to, to finish so they could, you know, say goodnight to him. And um, a security guard kind of was like, okay, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And he kind of kept pushing them along and did not want them lingering. So that's the issue is, is they don't like you to linger because, because they have another show coming. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Amanda, it was a crazy experience they had to go through. Yeah. Um, so. But I think at the end they kind of backed down because I, they knew they were in the wrong. Um, I think everybody is uh, on par with uh, Ben. Ben is one of the most amazing. He does a stand-up comedy show too called um, – what's it called? I don't know. You're the um, Ben fan. 
I can't believe I, I can't. It's just lost. I lost it in my, my head. Um, how you been? I think it's called how you been. Is that what it is? Um, but yeah, I, when we booked, uh, frozen sing along, I was going kicking and screaming and we got lucky. I think Ben was there the first night I saw that show and now I, he, he has to be there or I'm not going. Yep. There he is doing the hoop. -doo. But he, he's not a regular at the hoop. -doo. That was, uh, that's something that on occasion you'll see on his Instagram that he'll, that he'll do. But, um, his regular gig is the frozen sing along. Yeah, Anna, you can watch these on YouTube. After our, the show is done, the live right. shows, we stick uh, the shows on YouTube. So you can always watch them later on right. at your convenience. So if if right now the Hoop Did You Review is not something on your radar, but in two years you're planning a trip and you're like, oh, maybe we'll go to Hoop Did You, you can go back to YouTube and find this video and watch it again. Who said Jaffa Cakes? Because my kids love Jaffa Cakes. I don't know who said that. Yeah, I don't know either. But my kids love Jaffa Cakes. They have a brother-in-law from England, and he brings those back for them. Well, Dave, you said you didn't think Hoopty Doo can fill an hour, and you're right, because we're at 36 minutes. I told you. <laughs> well, we still got a lot going on. We still got Magnus to give away. Okay. Uh, uh, we can talk about anything you want. Anybody have any questions about um, price increases? Uh about rise of resistance anything like that well i heard rise of resistance was a little bit better today because you know yesterday was president's day sunday was president's day weekend um and i heard that today went a little bit smoother we're going to talk about the debacle that was rise of the resistance this past weekend on the disney crush podcast which comes out tomorrow night um we already recorded that show, so I don't want to give away too much of that. I want you guys to watch that. Now you guys are going to get sick of us. A live show and then the podcast the day after. And I've also been in contact with uh, Hanover Fist, and we've actually recorded a few things. So I'll be putting together maybe a, a little ditty with him. And I've been talking to my brother Steve. He, he's uh, I've talked to him, too. So we might do uh, maybe some movie shows. Who knows? We got a lot of good, exciting stuff coming up. Sounds good. Amanda's eating her healthy soup. Yeah, Amanda's uh, changing her diet. I think she's she getting healthy. She getting healthy. Brian wants to know. Oh, did you? Sorry. Brian, Brian has a question. He's staying at Pop for the first time this summer, and he's curious if there's an advantage to taking the Skyliner versus the buses to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Yes, Brian. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Um, the buses at Pop Century will now only come once an hour for Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Disney invested a lot of money in those Skyliners. And as Shannon is saying, they have decided that they are now reducing bus service to those parks from the Skyliner resorts. The Skyliner is wonderful because as soon as you're ready to go, you walk over to the Skyliner station. There's no waiting for a bus. It's just a continuous loop of Skyliners that are coming. So you don't have to wait for the next bus. You just get on the next Skyliner, which is right there. It's, it's instantaneous. There's no waiting for a bus anymore. So you're on your way and um, there's no traffic. There's no red lights. You go. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, and it's you know, amazing. I was not excited about this Skyliner. You could ask Kevin, uh, I was terrified and, um, I'm actually, uh, I can see its value and I made a believer out of me. Yeah. Steven's talking about uh rise of resistance. He said a long time ago that they opened it way too soon. You're right. I think you know, so. Uh, the technology, they, they're not ready. It's, it's yeah. keeps, it's breaking down multiple times a day. And that is part of what the issue is with people rope dropping. If you're rope dropping Hollywood studios, the Skyliner hasn't been opening early enough for that. At least it wasn't when, when they were doing the seven o'clock openings at Hollywood, they weren't opening the Skyliner until seven 30. I don't know now that it's, they're doing eight o'clock. Um, you probably, if you're rope dropping Hollywood, I Ubered, I took a lift, but, um, 
but there are buses. So you might have to see if, the, if there's a bus coming or if you want to get a, a lift instead. Uh, ooh, um, Anna, I've, my hair has been longer than what it was before I just cut it. I've had long hair most of my life, off and on. I go through phases. I'll shave it, cut it halfway like I did now, mohawk it sometimes. <laughs> my husband I'm always changing. That too, mohawk. Yes, Kevin. Amanda uh, lo loves the Skyliner. Me too, M Amanda. I went on it last time, our last trip, and it's my one of my new favorite things for sure. That just amazing how quick it is, how quick it loads, and they don't try to so far. They don't try to jam you in. Mm -hmm. uh, they give you enough room. Yeah, uh, Uli. Uh, I'm sorry, Uli. Uh, you know, I would play the uh, the piano right now, but. I'm not as good as my brother Steve. My brother Steve can tickle the ivory pretty well. I can play the guitar for you. I can break that out. I think it would be really hard for Dave to play that <laughs> piano behind him. It would uh, be. I can't play at all. I'm not good. <laughs> his house got incredibly larger in the last half hour. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see where I'm, I'm totally lost now. I can't it's okay. Even, it's okay. I don't know where I'm at. Uh, what is it? Do we see this yet? Has a largest. Uh, that is different. There are changes to it every time as they figure out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. You know, uh, Uli, um, it's, I know that I've been on it twice now and I, it, there's a, a, part of the show that was different than the first time Both well, I know, yeah i know when i rode i missed the entire pre-show because it was broken so i mm. if if that's what the woman's talking about that different elements are breaking and and they're trying to patch it patch the ride so they could get people on it even without certain elements that's that's true but dave's also mentioned that riding it more than once you see other things because of the trackless system you're going in different directions so there's that as well. Boy, the comments are just coming. <laughs> yeah, I'd be. Uh, uh, I'm not good. I'm just not good on the piano. Dave, that I house, would... that house behind you is spotless, <laughs> and you have that white couch. I just with, we, with your uh, pets. <laughs> we we just got this couch right here. The dogs and cats are not allowed on that couch right there. We just got that. <laughs> oh, David. What I'm gonna sh did I share this? I, I, let me show you show you guys. I'm gonna um I have a camera set up in the house. Watch I'm gonna. This is the backyard. Right, pretty, right. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's our backyard. Show me, we got a little. Show me, show me the other backyard, the one that has spires and and things. The what? Your other backyard, the other the, the other view from your backyard. Oh, this one here, this one right there. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. his other backyard. Mm -hmm. That's my other one. That's a good one. I like that one. Let's just say I'm going to be investing in a green screen and you're going to see my house next week. It's going to suddenly change. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry. I just took that off. Go ahead. Put that back up. <laughs> <sighs> Brian's asking about the uh, Skyliner from pop century. You will have to get off at Caribbean beach resort at Caribbean beach resort. There's a transfer station. If you're going to Epcot, you'll go on the Epcot line, which goes through Riviera. You don't have to get off at Riviera, but if you want to, if you want to eat a Topolino's or a uh, Piatto Primo, I think it's called the, the food, the uh, quick service there, which I've heard excellent things about. Um, you can get off at Riviera or you can stay on and travel through to Epcot. If you're going to Hollywood studios, again, you'll take pop, to Caribbean, you'll get off, and there's a separate line for Hollywood Studios. It's really quick and easy and painless. And like Susan said earlier, even if it looks like there's a big long line, it moves really fast because it's just continually moving. So that picture behind me is um, I think my it I think it came from someplace like Ross or uh, TJ Maxx, something like that. My, my stepdaughter bought it for me one year for a holiday. I wish I could draw like that. 
Yes, Dave. <laughs> well, sir, let me tell you. <laughs> the uh, the staff will be here shortly, so I must wrap this up very quickly. Uh, I've got dinner at uh, nine o'clock sharp. Yeah. So I, I must I must wrap this up, Tony, and very quickly, if you don't okay. mind. Amanda, you ate at Primo Primo Piat, Piatto. I don't know how to say it. Um, I hear really great things about the about the quick service at Riviera, and I think next time I stay at Pop, we're gonna go eat there versus the Pop food court. It's it's so easy on the Skyliner just to go over there. It just really opens up your world. Think about this, Brian. You now have door-to-door -door service to the boardwalk, to Beach and Yacht Club, to the Swan and Dolphin. That opens up so many more dining options, so many more entertainment options for you. If you feel like going to Ample Hills for ice cream, you could just hop on the Skyliner and go over and get off at the International Gateway and you're right there. It really makes Pop Century and Art of Animation a more desirable place to stay. Disney knows this now. They're charging $50 to $60 more a night versus the All-Stars. So you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, Shannon, it's a, they it's, say it's a two-hour show. We talked about that earlier. But Tony Ann thinks it's more like a 90-minute show. But I, they, I just know they have to they have to turn the tables and, and clean up be, between the shows. And the shows are only two hours and 15 minutes apart. So I think they're... I think the show was a little shorter than two hours myself. Oh, Uli stayed at Riviera and says that the quick service at Riviera is slow. Hmm. But really good. So. Oh, I'm sorry about that, oh, Amanda. But did you see what Uli said about... They have a $17 hanger steak that's better than Be Our Guest. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've never eaten at Be Our Guest. I know the Veronica has, you have, but I've always just, I don't know why, I've just never been there. What I'm, are always, your I'm always doing something else. What are your dates again, Amanda? Because I just got my March. Actually, I know when you're coming. I'll be there with my husband, but I don't think my husband... Wants to hang out with with uh, with people that watch the Disney Crush. He's he's not in a Disney Crush kind of mood for our anniversary. He won't even hang out with me. So no, he just said it's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks the rat is a cult. Yeah. yeah, he thinks anybody who likes Disney is a member of a cult, which we kind of are. Let's We're face it, lovers. we're all rat lovers. He just said. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> all right. No more Monte Cristo. This, the hotel's only been open two months. They're already taking things off the menu. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they are working out the kinks. All right. Working so, out the kinks. Kind of like the Rise of the Resistance, right? Working out the kinks. I hope it's better than Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> you, you tired of that background there, Steve-O? Yeah. Well, we have um, we have a show coming out tomorrow. Podcast. It's kind of a, a Facebook show. We're talking about what everybody's talking about. The um, rise of the resistance was big news on Facebook this weekend. There were price increases for annual passes and certain options on tickets. So we'll talk about that and other news stories. And um, I think, you know, it'll be a good show. I hope it's a good show. What do you think, Dave? You edited it today. Yeah, I <laughs> I did. I had a little fun with it too. So, okay. but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I thought it was a good show. Okay. You know, you know how we do our shows. We just kind of go with the flow. So look for that tomorrow night. And um, Uli says every day, the soup of the day was tomato basil. Kevin wants to know who Glenn is going to see Hoopty Doo with in next February. Apparently not him. Me? You want to know why? Because Kevin would never eat Hey Hey. Mm -mm. And I have to ask Kevin, 
what are you doing up? What is it, two o'clock in the morning? So it's got to be at least uh, one o'clock, 12, one o'clock there. She doesn't even think she's going to try for Rise of Resistance. Might actually get to check out Pandora if he. Everyone is at Galaxy's Edge. Maybe Pandora crowds are lower. Maybe, hopefully, wistful thinking. Ha ha. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It, everything's crowded now. Yeah. I heard Pandora had three hour waits this over this weekend. Um, I know, Shannon, you said, said earlier when you were coming. Was it July? You said. Um, I think she said September. Was it September? No. Kevin is going with Lou Mangello and he's going to wear that dub de dub podcast shirt that he was sporting the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that I want to see. That I want to see. Glenn. Better September. practice. Yeah, Shannon's going in September. Uh, September crowds are usually a little bit lighter, honestly. September is actually still a good month to go because a lot of kids are going back to school and people don't want to pull their kids out of school in that first month. So you might you might have some luck. This past September, crowds were pretty decent. And you know, if you're not going Labor Day weekend, you might you might get lucky. You also want to invest in travel insurance because September is prime hurricane season. So just be aware of that. Was that Manny Ray? That just no, no, that's my phone. No, Mandy's on a cruise, so she will not be interrupting us. Oh, that won't stop her. That's not going to stop her. Oh. Teachers don't take off the first six weeks. They try to be good at the beginning of the year. They take off later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I think you should be okay, Shannon, if you're going if you're going in September. That usually is still slightly less crowded. Just know you're going to sweat. Prayer plan for some air conditioned breaks for some pool breaks or wherever your family best deals with the heat. We need Veronica to come here and, and pick a number for us soon. Okay. Good night, Kevin. Kevin's going to bed. Okay, Kevin. Night, night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Kevin, we are uh, Kevin, Steve, we are going to talk about Cinderella's refurbishment on the podcast this week, we talked about it. Actually, Dave has a picture of it right behind. Where's that picture of the castle, Dave? You mean out my other window? Yes. Was that the new? Yeah, that's the new picture with the like pinkish U to it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's then, very, it's then, very then, Oh, look, there's some deer in my backyard. Look. Oh, look how cute. They're just right. so cute. Look so at them. With our last couple minutes, Veronica is going to pick the winner of our magnets. People who were on our Friends of the Disney Crush Facebook page knew that we were going to be doing a drawing tonight. We're going to be giving away some pass holder magnets. If you are not a member of the Disney Crush, the Friends of the Disney Crush Facebook group, join our group and you will learn about these giveaways such as these pass holder magnets that are going to be given away tonight. Are you ready, Veronica? Oh, yeah, I've been late July twice. I'm okay. It's hot. Veronica, come on in here and pick a number for us. Let's <laughs> let's 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 pick one of these people to win these magnets. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let me give them the last shuffle here. This is uh Vanna. Vanna White. Say hello to Vanna White. Hi. She's gonna play the piano after. Right? <laughs> okay, you ready? All right, I'm I'm nervous. Okay. Here oh, we go. I'm nervous. Okay. There we go. Can you see? I can't see that. Eight, number eighteen. Who's number eighteen? Who's eighteen? Let me find out who's eighteen is. Oh. Uli says hi to Veronica. Uli says hi, Veronica. Hi, Bryson. Hello. Well, 18 is not here, I can tell you. <laughs> or they would have jumped on. I think I'll be in charge of the names next time, too. Oh, I, I just, I've got so much. I don't know where they went. I don't know. I know it's not number 13. 
No, 13 is not allowed to play. I was 13. Mm -hmm. I can look it up on the on our Facebook group, unless somebody knows. Uh, Uli was 17. Oh. oh. Steve says hello, Veronica. Hello. Kevin says that. Hmm? 18 is his age. Okay. And Brian is volunteering to be number 18. I can't believe you don't know who number 18 is, Dave. Well, I had the pay. I had it. I got it right here. I just I had it. It's uh, Jill Kirstefik. Hey, Jill. Congratulations. You are the winner of the podcast, not the podcast, the Passholder Magnets, Chippendale and the Festival of the Arts Magnet. And if you private message Dave, he will get them in the mail to you. And if you were not a contestant tonight, you need to join the Friends of the Disney Crush Facebook group. Yep. Amanda Bond is 007. I know. I can't believe that. How crazy was that? And Kevin is actually 18 times four. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, guys. I think that's all we got for tonight. I hope you enjoy do us doing these live streams. We like doing them with you. I hope you'll join us again. If you have any ideas for topics you want us to discuss or any other questions, you can feel free to ask us. We uh, are at the, the Disney crush at gmail.com. You know, we're on Facebook on the Disney crush, the Disney crush Facebook page, the friends of the Disney crush Facebook group. What, where else can people find us? Uh, they can find us on Instagram at the underscore Disney crush uh, on Twitter at the Disney crush. There you go. Um, Run. And uh, did you email the Disney Cross at gmail.com? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, feel free another... to private message us. <laughs> and uh... Steve is not digging this background. No. Okay. We'll leave you with that one. How's that? Okay. Oh, I like that one. Bryson thinks we can see him. Bry Amanda, I will send you a, 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 a link for you to join one, one night, and we'll have Bryson on the show. Cause he can join us the way we had Kevin on. Mm -hmm. So, and we, we're going to, we'd like to have more guests. So if there's a topic that you're passionate about at Disney, if you've been on a tour, you want to talk about and you'd like to come on, we'll love to have you on. So let us know. Okay. Susan says, good night. Good night. Good you night, guys. Good night you, guys. Thanks for joining us. You guys are awesome. We love you guys. Absolutely. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>